Hey, everyone, and thanks for joining us for our daily semifinal recap show. I'm your host, Lauren Khalil. If you like listening to us chat about CrossFit news and everything that's going on in the sport, make sure to subscribe and like our channel. Our day one recap show, it's finishing up in Knoxville, Tennessee at the Syndicate Crown. Justin Medeiros doing what he does with two fourth place finishes, but still sitting in first place overall. A few new names at the top of the leaderboard on the women's side with uh, Gabby McClelland in first. And of course, CrossFit Mayhem Freedom having a clean day sweep with two first place finishes and the overall leader. Joining me from Tennessee is Kiefer Lammy, who's been at the events all day long. How has it been? A lot of heavy weights, a lot of fitness to wrap up day one. It's been fun. It's been awesome to be back in person for the first week here. Um, definitely starting off with the lift is a nice way to start. It's it's the heaviest weight. It's the stuff that people like to see. So So I'm excited for the rest of the weekend now. Yeah, and it was super impressive. We'll start with the men's side. We had Tudor Magna and Griffin Raleigh both tying for first place, putting up a whopping 345 pounds. How electric was it in the stadium during this? It was it was amazing to see, honestly. What's even cooler than the weight they put up is the fact that Griffin probably had another 10 or 15 pounds in him if he needed to. Um, I mean... Tudor's a guy, he's young. I think he's only, what, 19 years old. So to see somebody that young putting up those numbers is really, really impressive. Were these numbers that, like, as a coach, you expected to see it at this stage in the competition? Or were you surprised to see 345 pounds, not just by one athlete, but two? Yeah, you know, talking about it in the gym leading up to the event, we thought something over 330 was going to be a really good number. Uh, I'm not surprised that a guy like like Griffin Raleigh put up 345, but to see, you know, three guys with 340 on the bar or more was really, really impressive. And I mean, even when we look at the women's side, they had some impressive numbers that they put up as well. We had uh, Christine Kolenbrander and Paulina Haro both hitting 245 pounds on the complex. Yeah, nuts, honestly. I mean, Christine, I think, power cleaned all three of her cleans, even on her final attempt. Yeah. Paulina looked solid through the jerk. It's for me, it's it's not necessarily seeing how they clean, but it's seeing how they can finish after those two rolling front squats and getting through the split jerk. And they were both, you know, technically sound, looked really good. Do you think that the women's side is getting stronger when, I mean, you see these women put up the weights, you were even saying power cleaning them. They make it look so easy and flawless. I know. I, I mean, they're definitely getting stronger. Um, I think the semifinal stage is a place where we get to see that highlighted even more because sometimes we see this coming from the first heat people earlier in the competition that don't necessarily excel at the high skill gymnastics later on, um, but have a chance to showcase it here. So something that I thought was really fun about event two, and we had to wait because he wasn't actually in the last heat, but James Sprague today is his 20th birthday. What a celebration, especially with an event win. How incredible was that for him? Oh, it must have been so fun. You know, I was I was in the family section. I was near his parents. They even had signs up for him and everything. You know, the announcers were talking about it. So he was well ahead of the rest of his heat. And it was impressive to see him still pushing the way that he did. Were you able to see him on the sidelines after he did the competition, just kind of waiting to see how uh, the last heat was going to pan out? I'm not sure where he was. No, I didn't get to see him there. I'm sure he was watching from the back, though. Any other interesting things that you saw on the men's field from event two and um, any of the battles going on on the field? No, I, uh, you know, I was super interested to see how it would play out. I knew that the men's competition was going to be a little different than the women's because the 30, 20, 10 Cal scheme is a little, it's, it's quicker. It's different for the men, right? So it's going to be a higher power, power output workout. Um, I expected Hopper to do well, which he did. And then it was a super close race between Medeiros and a couple other guys right behind him. So the final heat was a lot of fun. Yeah. And I think they said that um, Hopper finished the last 10 calories in something like 23 seconds. He was so fast. He was fast the whole way through. Um, you know, I think if not for having to readjust his sled a couple times that he may have actually, he may have had Sprague by the end. I know. And that was something that everybody just kept or the announcers kept talking about, like, is that going to affect him in the end, whether he takes the event win or really goes back to James? Uh, looking at the women's side, Haley Adams, she started the day slow, but she knew it. She's 
uh, been working on strength, but you as a coach, um, other athletes know that strength takes takes time to build. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, she mentioned, you know, I was happy with the lift that I did. That's what I wanted to hit. Um, but then she comes back with no mercy, takes a vent to and wins it. Is this what she needed moving into day two? Oh, yeah. I think, you know, we all know that the lifting events are not her strongest point, right? And so the most that she can expect of herself is to go out and to execute her plan well, which she did. She went three for three. She hit the number that I'm assuming that they were hoping for, uh, mm -hmm. to the best of our knowledge. And then you just try to wipe that clean and move forward. But I'm sure that ending the day on an event win after that makes it a little bit sweeter, especially going into a day tomorrow where we know how much she loves GHDs. I can only imagine mm -hmm. she's going to do great on the legless rope climb workout and it should be pretty smooth sailing for her. Any other names that you were keeping your eye on for event two on the women's field? Um, you know, again, I expected that some of the the bigger athletes would do pretty well. Some of the same athletes that we saw do well in the lifting complex, just because mm -hmm. the bike and the sled require that of you. So, you know, I noticed in the first round, some of the smaller athletes were able to go a lot faster with the burpee deadlifts. After that, the athletes that could keep pace on the bike did really well. Just like, you know, Gabby McClellan, who's sitting in first right now, did it from I think she came in third place from the first heat of the day. Yeah. Um, super impressive. Same with Emily White, who's been doing great so far this weekend. But I am really curious to see how they do once we transition into more gymnastics movements for the rest of the weekend, being that they're some of the bigger athletes. So let's talk a little bit about Gabby McClellan. For people who don't know her, they're seeing her at the top of the leaderboard going into day two. As a coach, um, what really stood out to you about her as an athlete? I mean, you know, I didn't know much about her going into this weekend either. Uh, we now know she's super strong, right? We know that she's gritty. That second workout was was tough by anybody's standards. If you looked at some of the faces and people's positions at the finish line after the workout, um, you know, what I'm curious to see now is how she does, again, as I said, going through some of the higher skill movements the rest of the weekend. Justin Medeiros, I mean, he's a name that obviously we all recognize as last year's fittest man on earth. He never really does anything flashy. He just stays under the radar. He does what he needs to do and still ends up on top. Yeah. Is this is this what we have just come to expect from him now? <laughs> you know, honestly, it's almost like he's just kind of playing it cool and just cruising through the weekend. It, you know, if anybody's able to watch the highlights of his lifting complex, it looked like he had another 10 pounds in the tank if he wanted to. I was actually surprised when he didn't put more weight on the bar for it. His squats looked super strong. His jerk technique and overhead position was amazing. And so on that one, it was almost like he's just he just knows that he doesn't need to take first place because he's going to be so good throughout the whole weekend. Um, right. Same thing with the second workout. He was one of the few guys that I saw that just kind of walked off after the event and wasn't rolling around on the floor. <laughs> He, he's not going full throttle quite yet. He wants to leave yeah. a little bit of how fit is he actually once he uh, hopefully gets to the CrossFit games. Yep, exactly. Okay. Another name or team rather that has no surprise after day one is CrossFit Mayhem Freedom sweeping the board, two first place finishes. They looked incredible. This is something that we expected they're sitting in first. Um, I mean, they're, they're just doing what they do best win. Yeah, honestly, I mean, to no surprise, they've been super impressive. I think they were the only team in the first event where all four individuals cleared the last barbell. Uh, when it got to the women's turn, they actually played rock, paper, scissors for who was going to take the last, the bonus attempt on the snatch. It was like, it became like a joke for them, but they knew they would get through it and they were just picking and choosing who they wanted to keep going. So uh, they're clearly having fun. Uh, the second event was interesting to see. It was an interval style workout. There were a couple, there was at least one team that was really close to them through the first set. And then as mm -hmm. soon as everybody got tired and you saw teamwork start to break down, they just pulled away and there was no looking back. Do you think that we will see a lot of, um, besides mayhem freedom, do you think that we'll see a lot of shifts in the leaderboard with some of these other teams? Uh, right now we have uh, training think tank and second um, and some of the other teams like the point spread, isn't that significant uh, when you separate mayhem freedom? Uh, you know, I'd be interested to see. I think that we'll see a lot of the teams that did well in the second workout do well through the rest of the weekend, because that's just mm -hmm. more indicative of what teamwork is going to look like and what the workouts are like in general. Um, training think tank, I'd expect to do well. They're a little older and more experienced. They've been to the games together. Um, CrossFit 
de density is a note I know is a team that's trained together for a long time, whether or not they've actually been through these stages together. Um, so, you know, I would expect some of the same teams that have done well in the past, but you know, it would be exciting to see some of the younger teams or newer teams like this mayhem justice team do well. Mm, absolutely. And I mean, as people wrap up day one of all of the coverage from the semifinal weekend, moving into day two, who are some of the athletes um, and maybe even storylines that people should be paying attention to? Sure. Uh, I mean, I think on the women's side, the, one of the big stories is just seeing how these two women at the top, at the top of the leaderboard do. You know, we have a lot of big names on the female side. We have Haley here, Alexis mm -hmm. Raptus, Ariel Lowen, all people that have been to the games before. Um, but the two people at the top of the leaderboard haven't. So I'll be super curious both to see how the newcomers do, but also to see how some of the veterans battle back from the positions they've been in the first day. Awesome. Day one, we're done. Are you excited for day two? <laughs> I am. I'm super excited. We have an early wake up tomorrow, but it's done early too. So it's a nice trade off. That's true. Then you can get a little bit more rest going into Sunday. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Keeper, thank you so much for sitting down and joining us. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow to wrap up day two at the Syndicate Crown.